Hey there, my name is E.W. Buckley and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to use some of the new features in the free Ableton Live 12.3 update to create your own instruments and samples instantly, generate endless ear candy, and create really slick transitions for your productions effortlessly. Huge thanks to Ableton for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Every awesome thing that I'm going to show you in this video centers around the new Paste Bounce Audio feature. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have a MIDI track here with an instance of DS snare followed by grain delay. I'm going to highlight this clip, right click on it, copy it, and then on the audio track below, I'm going to right click once more to bring up the context menu and select paste bounced audio. When I click this, Live is going to bounce the copied clip with any processing down to a new audio file. And it literally is that fast. That was not any editing. It's almost instantaneous. And if I play, we have our snare printed down to audio. But the coolest part of Paste Bounce Audio is that if you have any sort of randomization or probability within the clip that you are copying, it will bounce a different variation every time you paste it without having to copy it again. So let's go back up to this snare track. And I'm going to engage this instance of expression control that I've already gone and set up to randomize any parameter that I map it to. I'm going to map it to the color, the tone, the filter, and the tuning of DS snare. And then I'm going to also map it to the frequency of grain delay. Now, every time a MIDI note is triggered, all of those parameters are going to be randomized. And if I copy the MIDI clip and go down to our audio track, and this time to bounce paste it, I'm going to do Command Option V. You could do Control Option V if you're on Windows, pasting it. And let's hit it again and one more time. And now I'm going to have three entirely different snares. The bigger your signal chain and the more parameters you randomize, the cooler this gets. Here's a MIDI track with DS snare and a robust signal chain. I have three instances of expression control. One is randomizing parameters on DS snare, the other is randomizing parameters on corpus, and the third is randomizing parameters on roar set to multiband mode. After that, I'm peppering it with a little bit of OTT, boosting the transient with drum bus, and then adding a bit of soft clipping with saturator. And then I'm running it into a channel strip that's just doing a little bit of EQing and compression. It is a relatively complex signal chain with 15 parameters worth of randomization, but the payoff is worth the effort. So I'm going to highlight my clip, I'm going to copy it, and I'm gonna bounce paste it five times. You could do this over and over again and keep creating cool snares. Don't like what you hear? Cool. Paste bounce audio again. It's like a customizable generative sample pack with a single key command. And once you set up a chain that you like, you can just save that clip then to your user library and then load it back into a project anytime you need a snare. And as a nice little extra touch, if I hit click to preview, every time it runs through the preview, it generates a different snare. It's hard for me to overstate just how cool this feature is. This is essentially resampling, which has been a part of Live for a long time, but this makes resampling as frictionless as copying and pasting. And that lack of friction is what's significant. Reducing friction in one area tends to have a cascading effect on other areas as well. And that's 100% true when we apply all of this to creating your own sample instruments. Paste Bounce Audio makes it so much easier to create dynamic multi-sampled instruments with per note variables. Variations. I have here a track set up with two instances of expression control. One is randomizing parameters on the drift synthesizer, and the other is randomizing parameters on corpus. I have MIDI clips for each C from C0 to C5. Now, if we expand the sampler on the track below, in the zone tab, we can see that I have set up five variations of each note. The reason I did this is so that I can use Sampler's randomize round robin feature. This means that every time I play a note, it will randomly select a different sample within the shared range to play. From there, I drove the shaper on the filter pretty hard, added a long attack, and an instance of hybrid reverb set to shimmer a perfect fifth below. And the end result is this otherworldly hybrid string instrument.
I can tell you from experience that creating this kind of multi-sampled instrument with 25 samples used to take a lot longer than this. Paced bounced audio makes it easy to create the kind of instruments that inspire entire songs, and that's exactly what happened to me when I created this hybrid string instrument. The song after it's done was produced almost entirely from instruments created using paced bounced audio. I'll link it below for those of you who want to hear the full song, but what I want to show you right now is how paced bounced audio and paced group to new track made it possible to finish this song with a much higher degree of polish, and how both of these tools can be used in your own productions to do the same. One of the hardest parts of finishing any song is the detail work that comes at the end of the production process. A big part of that detail work is ear candy, the extra sounds and flourishes that help pull your listener into the world of your song. The vocal on the verse of this song leaves a lot of space in between each phrase, and there isn't a whole lot in the accompaniment to help grab the listener's attention. Let's drop in partway through verse 2 and I'll show you what I mean. Taking in everything that you've done Will you realize there's nowhere left to go? Adding ear candy normally calls for tediously searching through samples or presets, and that takes me out of the flow of production pretty quickly. So instead, towards the end of the production, I set up an instance of meld in which I randomized every parameter in both voices of the instrument. And again, I'm using expression control to do this. I then bounced a ton of variations and selected some of my favorites. <laughs> I then loaded them into Simpler and Samplers and made pretty generous use of Autopan Tremolo as well as adjusted envelopes and various other settings to create these really simple instruments that then just fill the gaps between the vocals. Let's play again from that same exact spot, but now I have the ear candy added in. Taking in everything that you've done There's nowhere left to go After it's done, you'll call me when you get home I can't wait to hear what you think All of these little flourishes make a massive difference to how the verse feels. There's another way that you can approach using Pace Bounce Audio to add ear candy that is equally effective. Using that same meld patch, I recorded the main riff of the song onto a MIDI track. With all the randomization, it's pretty aggressive and unpredictable sounding. <laughs> Now that's pretty unusable on its own. So instead what I did is I copied the clip and then I used paste bounce audio into take lanes on an audio track below it instead of on the main lane. And from there I used take lanes exactly how you use take lanes. I just grabbed the selection from each take that I actually wanted to use to accent the riff and I put it up onto the main lane. So let me play this for you, but I'm going to add in the guitar so that you have some context for how it feels in the entire riff. In the context of the entire drop, these synth stabs punctuate the action and help to keep the listener engaged. Without paste bounced audio, I would have had to set up a different patch for every single variation. The other piece of detail work that takes up a massive portion of the production process is transitions. Getting one section to flow smoothly into another section with the kind of impact that you want it to have is an incredibly difficult task. It really is like a microcosm of composition unto itself. Again, paste bounce audio and bounce group to new track makes this process a lot easier. Let's zero in on this space between the verse and the drop. The verse vocal ends with an extended phrase that adds two extra measures to the verse. Will you believe that you're finally free? Finally free. 
Now, I could have let the verse vocal overrun into this pre-drop section, but I wanted to give it space to be on its own. To provide support for the vocal, I grouped together the guitar and that hybrid string instrument that I created, and I highlighted the last two measures of the group. I right-clicked on it and then selected Bounce Group to New Track, which is a new feature in Live 12.3, and that printed those two final measures down to audio. And I hit the R key then to reverse that sample, and it created then this lovely accompaniment to that vocal leading into the next section. I'll play from that same spot again at about measure 37. Will you believe that you're finally free? Finally free. It's a simple solution, but it gets the exact result that I wanted, and quickly and frictionlessly, which again is the theme of this whole topic. The pre-drop section right after it takes that same concept and scales it more dramatically. I took that same exact group and I added the ear candy into it. And from there then I paste bounced audio for the entire verse section. I then took that bounce and I loaded it up into an instance of Simpler, set to slice mode, in which I just evenly divided the whole sample into 64 regions. I then just copied the entire MIDI pattern over from the drums and moved notes up and down until I found just a sound that I liked. And this was a very fast and fluid process, and the result is something really fun. So many music producers get caught up in trying to find a signature sound, but I'm of the mind that you should try to find a signature process. And reducing friction in your workflow is how you build a signature process. Paste bounced audio is a huge friction reducer, and as a result, it speeds up your workflow and what's possible in your productions. So if you haven't yet, I would encourage you to download Live 12.3. Thanks so much for watching. If you like talking about Ableton Live as much as I do, consider subscribing. Till next time.